right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. Looks like, all right, great. Uh, my name is Dave Sterling. I'm with RTP Company. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, uh, it stands for Reinforced Thermoplastics. We're a custom thermoplastics compounder located in Winona, Minnesota. And uh, we work on every resin system from polypropylene to peak. Uh, if you can put it in plastics, chances are we've done it at some point. Uh, today what I'm here to talk to you guys about is long fiber thermoplastics for metal replacement. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of focusing on the aerospace industry, but uh, this, the, uh, I guess, ideas presented in this uh, presentation are applicable across the board to any uh, market where you're looking to replace metal with a plastic. Uh, we'll start off today with a little bit about uh, me and my, my history with the company. Uh, from there we'll talk about some of the advantages of long fiber uh, and some VLF basics. Uh, then we'll go on a quick uh, property comparison, do a little bit of, uh, I guess, a, a comparison to some aerospace uh, aircraft grade aluminums. And uh, at the end we'll kind of sum it up and hopefully have some time for questions. So about me, uh, again, my name is Dave Sterling. I am the Application Development Manager uh, with RTP Company for our Defense and Aerospace Division. Uh, my background is I have a Bachelor's of Science in Composite Materials Engineering from Winona State University. Uh, started with RTP Company in 2001, and my background is product development. I did about three years of material formulation uh, in our product development group. After that, I moved over to our computer-aided engineering group to do uh, mold flow simulation and uh, structural finite element analysis. And uh, now I work in our defense and aerospace division. Uh, outside of RTP, uh, I enjoy aviation. Uh, I'm a private pilot, uh, member of EAA and AOPA. I uh, also enjoy uh, Lego, uh, music, and I do a little bit of gaming from time to time. So, uh, well, now we'll go into some things about long fiber. Um, basically, long fiber is a, a thermoplastic technology where we have reinforcements that are longer than your standard chopped fibers. Uh, some of the advantages there are you can reduce cost, uh, you can eliminate uh, finish, uh, finishing, welding, uh, machining operations, you get design freedom by switching from metal to VLF, uh, you can consolidate parts, uh, eliminate assembly operations, you can also do some really unique shapes. Um, you can also look at environmental concerns. By switching from metal to plastic, you can get a lighter weight design. In the aerospace industry, this can mean better fuel efficiency, uh, ability to carry more cargo. Um, in addition, occasionally those uh, uh, polymeric materials can be recyclable. So if you're looking for an environmental footprint, um, you know, that can be an, uh, an option. Uh, in addition, you can have better corrosion and chemical resistance. You don't deal with uh, some of the issues that come with aluminums or steels, uh, things like that. You can also get some sound and vibration damping. And uh, with polymers, you can eliminate painting. Uh, you can do molded in aesthetic colors, and this can be really good for aircraft refits uh, when they want to go from an older interior look to a new interior look. Uh, you can have that molded in color and you don't have to worry about f finishing the parts. So some long fiber basics. Like I said, short fiber compounds, those are your traditional chop fiber thermoplastics. You've got uh, smaller fibers that are maybe an eighth inch long. Uh, once you go through the molding process, they might be uh, 50, 60 thousandths long. With the long fiber process, we actually pultrude that. So the fiber runs the entire length of the pellet. You've actually got a half inch long fiber that you start with. Uh, after that, you put it in your molding machine. It might break down a little bit, but it's still going to be longer than that, that short fiber. As an example, uh, this is a seat belt tensioner housing for an automotive application that uses a 60% long glass nylon 6.6. Uh, the molded part's up top. The bottom part is one that we put in a muffle furnace and we have actually burned off the resin. And that shows the skeletal structure that you get from a long fiber part. And that's really what's going to give you that strength, it's going to give you that creep resistance, the impact, uh, just the structure, uh, structural integrity uh, over, say, a short fiber material. As another example, this is a, another long fiber part. This part was actually molded using two different compounds. On the top, we've got the long fiber version. On the bottom, we've got the short fiber version. So you can see that when uh, you burn off the short fiber version, you really just end up with a pile of glass fiber, whereas the long fiber holds its shape and, uh, and, and gives you that, that skeletal structure. And with long fiber materials, the fiber retention 
uh, or, the, or the fiber length retention is the key. That's what's going to give you those, those properties. So when you're looking at converting, one thing we have to be very careful about is what's the part design? We need to make sure that the wall thicknesses are thick enough, that it's not going to shear the fiber, it's not going to destroy that fiber length. We need to make sure the gates are big enough so that they don't uh, shear the fiber. And generally when you mold it, you want to mold with low back pressure so that you're not grinding that fiber against the screw and ending up uh, on the bottom with a very expensive short fiber product. So that's, uh, you know, that's something RTP can help with. If you're looking to convert from metal, uh, we'll work with you. We'll help you with the design, uh, give you some tips on how you can have a part that looks like that versus the bottom one. Uh, the other thing with long fiber, a lot of people use this uh, when they need additional impact resistance. And with long fiber, the key there is energy absorption. Um, the graph here is, is basically showing you a uh, load uh, versus time curve and it's showing you energy absorption. And with a short fiber, you can see that the, the energy absorption is over a very short period of time. It's very uh, 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 low. You don't, the area under the curve there is not very high. So your, your energy absorption is just not there. As you increase the fiber length, you start to get that energy spread over a longer period of time and your peak energy goes up. So therefore, your area under the curve, your total energy absorbed by that impact becomes larger. So you have much higher damage tolerance with a long fiber material than you would with, say, a short fiber material. So looking back at the benefits of metal replacement, we talked about them a little bit earlier. For aerospace in particular, weight reduction is key. Everybody needs higher fuel efficiency. Everybody wants to carry more cargo, carry more passengers. With long fiber versus metal, you can do that. It's also a cost reduction. If you're machining parts right now, chances are you're having to machine every single part. And if you go to a molded part, you're going to be able to reduce your machining costs. You can probably reduce some of your finishing costs. You'll have a net molded part and uh, you can move forward that way. You also might have greater design freedom. Uh, in some cases, uh, there are places where you, you just can't make a, a metal part the same way you would make a molded part. So you might have greater design freedom to do uh, compound curves or, or um, odd looking parts that would cost a fortune to machine, but when you deal with plastics, you machine one mold and you're done. Uh, improved production economics, uh, you know, higher throughput, uh, it's gonna improve your, your cost per part. Uh, corrosion resistance, talked about that. Uh, you don't really have the corrosion issues with, uh, with plastics that you would with a metal. Uh, improved damage tolerance, safer failure mode in a lot of cases, and uh, sometimes material availability. We get a lot of uh, calls from customers now saying that uh, just metals are tough to get. Uh, in a lot of cases, the, the, the long fiber materials are going to be a little easier to get than some of the metallics. So now what I'd like to do is just <clears throat> actually do a, a, a real kind of real world example. Uh, compare some properties. The 6061 T6 and 6063 T6 are two common uh, uh, aircraft grade aluminums. Uh, they're used in interior and exterior applications, uh, but not uh, typically not primary flight structures. Uh, they're commonly used in parts where machining is required, and this includes uh, complex metallic assemblies. Here are some of the instantaneous properties at uh, room temp. Uh, if we look at the 6063 and the 6061 versus, uh, we're comparing it versus a 40% long glass fiber polyether imid, a 50% long fiber peak, and a 50% uh, long fiber polyethalamid uh, PPA material. Uh, as you can see, you know, if you look at those properties, the, the tensile strengths look uh, uh, comparable. You know, they're not, not too bad. Um, specific gravity is much lower. But all of a sudden, you look at the elastic modulus and you say, oh man, those, those plastic materials, are, they're so much uh, uh, less stiff than a metallic. You know, what am I going to do? I need that stiffness. Well, in most cases, plastics are not going to be a one-to-one -one replacement. We can't just go into a current metal part design and replace it one-to-one. -one. It requires design work, and that's where you guys working with RTP, we can come up with something uh, that'll still meet your needs, um, but, but can be, uh, you know, the metal can be replaced by plastic. So just a simple design example to illustrate this, uh, we'll take a simply supported beam. It's three inches by a half inch wide by an eighth of an inch thick. We're gonna look at 6061T6 versus the 50 long glass peak. Uh, we're gonna evaluate maximum load versus aluminum and we're gonna evaluate the bending stiffness versus aluminum. 
So looking at this uh, uh, table here, uh, if we look at the 6061T6, we see the weight of the bar is going to be about uh, 8.3 grams. The max load that bar would be able to take is 78 pounds, and the deflection at 78 pounds is uh, about 54 thou. If we come over to the VLF peak number one, the bar dimensions here, we're still an eighth of an inch. We go down and we look at the weight. The weight's obviously a lot lower because the specific gravity of the peak is going to be lower. However, our maximum load is significantly less than what the peak can handle. And the deflection at 78 pounds were four times what the, uh, what the, the uh, aluminum is, and that's because of that lower elastic modulus. Now if we look at uh, example number two, what we're going to do is we're going to take and increase that, uh, that thickness slightly to uh, 188 thou. And now our weight is still less than the aluminum part. Our load carrying capability is significantly higher than the aluminum and our deflection is now in the ballpark it's not quite as low as the aluminum but it, it, it's there you know it's within you know 10 percent or so and so that's an example of how a one-to-one -one replacement of that eighth inch bar isn't going to be possible with our long fiber peak but if you change the design slightly you thicken it up a little maybe you add some ribbing uh, maybe you you know thicken it and add a little bit of ribbing all of a sudden you get a part that actually performs similar to your aluminum part but is still a lighter part than what the aluminum was and that's really that's where it, it, it really pays to work with us and uh, to have us help you uh, design your part um, so that you can get something that, that does work uh, where you can replace your metal with a, a thermoplastic um, as we do that, though, one thing we have to remember is that uh, thermoplastics are, are nonlinear. Uh, they're stress strain curves. You're going to have a, a definite yield point, and then it's going beyond that. Um, you're going to get uh, much lower modulus, and we have to be cognizant of that. The other thing on the right hand side uh, we're looking at here is stress strain curves in the uh, I guess the blue one on the top is the uh, dog bone, your ASTM D638 properties. The other two, uh, the purple shows you. Uh, approximate axial fiber orientation behavior, whereas the blue, uh, blue one on the bottom, or the teal one, will show you uh, tensile strength transverse to the fiber. So what you have to understand with thermoplastics is they're not, they're anisotropic. They're not going to be uh, same properties in every direction. So when you're designing your part, uh, we have to look at that and make sure that we get the fibers aligned in the direction of your load and that we account for any properties uh, that may be lower due to that fiber orientation. So summarizing metal replacement, uh, metal replacement can offer a cost reduction. Uh, total part costs need to be considered. Um, a lot of people get scared up front about tooling. They look at the cost for a tool and they say, man, I can't afford that. But if you really look at the total part cost and say, how much is it going to cost me to machine all of these parts versus how much is a tool going to be? Uh, a lot of times you can amortize that tool over all your parts and actually get a lower per part cost. So that's something that really needs to be considered. Um, VLF benefits include weight reduction, design freedom, corrosion resistance, uh, but these shortfalls in mechanical properties really need to be compensated for by design optimization. And that's where uh, the engineers at RTP company can help you out. We can uh, work with you on your design, massage it a little bit, and, uh, <clears throat> and then get you something that's going to work. So finally, uh, within RTP, we've actually got two booths here. We've got one in the MD&M side. It's uh, 1556. And then we've got one in the Aerocon, which is uh, 3970. Uh, we'd encourage you to go over there, check out our booths. We've got a lot of literature, uh, literature on long fiber, literature on our conductive compounds, our wear compounds. Um, our engineers are staffing the booth this week, so uh, be sure to stop over, talk to them. Uh, they'll be able to answer any questions you have. Uh, also, my contact information and uh, our other application engineer for uh, Defense and Aerospace, uh, that's our contact. So feel free to get a hold of us. Uh, we'd love to hear what uh, you guys are working on and uh, love to see how we can help you out. So uh, appreciate everybody coming out. And if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to take them. question was, what kind of fibers are we using? Um, in the long fiber, it's actually just e-glass. It's your, your standard fiberglass. We are doing some development with carbon fibers, and uh, that's something that I would expect probably next six to 12 months, Carl. Okay, about six to 12 months, we're, we're probably looking that we'll, we'll have some, uh, a variety of compounds based on that. But uh, th those are the, the, the primary ones we're looking at right now. Ah.
Good question. The question was, how does the e-glass e long glass compare to a short carbon fiber? Um, it's going to be, uh, uh, in the e-glass, you get about 10% over short glass fiber. Your tensile strength is like 10% over that. So you're not going to get to the carbon fiber strength with, a, with an e-glass e long glass. Your primary advantage for the long glass is the damage resistance from impact or for uh, uh, long term like creep and fatigue resistance. That's re really where you want to use those. If you need ultimate strength, you're still pretty much limited to carbon. So, anybody else? All right. Well, thank you all very much.